Hello everyone, today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go down a bunch of terms that you're probably gonna see if you're looking to get any kind of premium denim, raw denim, stuff like that. A lot of times when you're shopping for this stuff, you're reading through the descriptions and it's probably packed with a bunch of terms and phrases uh, that you're not familiar with. A lot of time denim heads, we love this stuff, we're into it. It's like what we dream about, you know, shuttle looms are going off in our brain all the time. And uh, so as somebody who might just be getting into it, you may be a little bit confused by some of this terminology. So I'm gonna run down a few of the ones that I for sure had to look up the first time I was into this and I wanted to sort of put them into a really short, concise video so you can just use this as reference. So uh, if any of these are repeats, I apologize, but for those of you who are looking to get into it, I think this will be really, really helpful. So we're gonna start off with the chain stitch. Now the chain stitch has been around for a really long time. It can either be performed by hand or by a union special machine 43200G, which was introduced in 1939. These things have been pulling duty for a long time and they are so solid, built so well. They're industrial machines after all, that they're still in service today. A lot of times people are remanufacturing these things. And you know, if you go get your jeans hemmed somewhere and you ask for a chain stitch, chances are they have a union special in the back. You can pick these things up on eBay. There are tons of them out there. A lot of times they're being bought up, uh, restored to their original condition and used because people like that chain stitch. What the chain stitch allows is a really cool roping pattern uh, in fades along the bottom, the hem of your jeans. Now the big brother to the chain stitch is actually the lock stitch. This is easier to do, it's more efficient, uh, but it doesn't have that old world style to it. A lot of people prefer the chain stitch to the lock stitch, but uh, really there's not much of a benefit. You don't get the roping that you would get with a chain stitch. However, this is probably one of the most common stitches you'll see out there, especially with thicker fabrics. Up next is the overlock stitch, also known as surging. If you take any of your mall brand jeans and then flip them inside out, turn the pant leg inside out, look along that inside seam. Chances are you'll see a bunch of what almost looks like figure eights going up the inside. That right there is the overlock. It's a very, very efficient way to, to marry two pieces of uh, fabric together. However, it's not the most uniform, best looking or strongest. For that, we're gonna have to look at the flat feld seam. So imagine one piece of fabric coming in like this, the other coming in like this, folding them over like that. So you have a finished edge here and a finished edge there. That's what you're gonna see on basically all the exterior seams on any pair of jeans, up the back or anywhere else, you'll see that nice finished edge. That right there is a flat felled seam. On higher end jeans, you'll also see that on the inside of the uh, the legs, basically everywhere. It's a it's a much better way to, uh, to make something. It's a much stronger stronger uh, union of those two materials. So a lot of times this is also used to hide seam allowance. If you get something and they say it could be let out or in, a lot of times that's the way they'll be able to hide that extra fabric is using a flat felled seam. Up next, we have to talk about the burr and rivet, which are just commonly known as rivets. What you're basically looking at is one piece called the rivet, which goes through the fabric. The burr is actually the washer that goes on top there joining that thing together. There's nothing that's gonna pull it apart. Most of the times, you'll find these in the corner of pockets, sometimes actually down in the crotch with a sewn over portion. Uh, any place where there's a lot of stress, any place where you're gonna see a lot of tugging, especially this way, you'll find a rivet there just to anchor it down a little bit more. Okay, next I'd like to go over some of the jean anatomy, which you're gonna see when you're going online and shopping at some of these great direct-to-consumer brands out there. The closer you can get your measurements to what they're offering, Offering online, the better your fit's gonna be, the happier you're gonna be. So let's start with the top block. This is basically the piece of fabric which goes from your legs all the way up to your waist on the front of your jeans. This really kind of dictates the overall look of the jeans. Uh, your rise is also included on that. The old school high rise, which comes up basically right below your navel. The low rise, which are popular in 1990s. Uh, you know, anything in between, that's really what it is. That top block section, it makes the difference between a pair of dad jeans and a pair of really cool looking jeans. Now the yoke is actually the same thing, but on the back. This is the portion that connects the legs up to the waistband on the back. Sometimes you'll see different patterns in there. Sometimes it's straight across. Sometimes it forms a little bit of a V. Sometimes it's even curved. There are a bunch of different styles out there. That's called the yoke. 
Now the next one I'm sure you're familiar with, this is the inseam, and that's the distance between the crotch and the hem where your legs come out. That distance right there is known as the inseam. Speaking of the bottom of your jeans, where your legs come out, that is called the hem. That's where you're gonna have the hemming done. That's also where you're gonna find the aforementioned chain stitch. Now we spoke about rise a little bit before, but basically the rise is how far up on your waist your jeans come. Whether they're low rise, whether they're high rise, somewhere in the middle, it all depends on how you want your jeans to fit. Most of the time for guys who have a little bit of extra around the middle, I recommend not going with a low rise because what it adds to is that kind of like compression and pushing those love handles out, it's not really great. Uh, go with something a little bit taller, maybe a medium rise. If you're even, you know, a little bit more daring, go with a high rise. That can look good too. That's sort of the old school cowboy look. It, it just looks good. It's classic. If you have the physique to pull it off, go for it. Up next is twill, and denim is a twill fabric. Essentially, all twill is is a diagonal weaving process where the weft yarn is woven over and under several warp yarns. That's where you see that sort of diagonal pattern. There's right-hand twill, which is mostly what you're gonna find out there. There's also left-hand twill. There's also broken twill, which almost has sort of a herringbone pattern to it. The world is your oyster, but twill is essentially the weaving process that makes up your denim. Now here's what I've been told I've pronounced wrong and that's selvage or selvage or selvage, whatever the hell you call it, selvage fabric. All it is is fabric made on old style shuttle looms which result in a narrow fabric bolt with a finished edge or what they call a self edge. You may see that your jeans come in sanferized. What does sanferized mean? Well, sanferized is just a process which reduces the amount of shrinkage that happens after the first wash. And alternatively, unsanferized jeans are basically known as shrink to fit jeans. Sometimes what people will do is they will wash them once, put them on when they're still wet, let them dry on their body. This basically makes them reduce and compress to your body, really making them a custom garment. Unsanferized jeans will shrink up to 10%. So you're talking about shrinkage this way and this way. You put them on in the beginning, they're gonna feel a little bit baggy. You go and wash them, well, 10% from what you started with is quite a drastic difference. So this is something not really for the uninitiated. I would not say it's the best thing to get for your first pair of denim, but somebody who's had a little bit more experience and somebody who maybe wants to go through that experience of actually shrinking to fit their denim. It's a pretty interesting uh, <laughs> experiment. You may see that your jeans were enzyme washed, and this is just a treatment process, just like stone washing was back in the day, acid washing, but what enzyme washing does, it's much more friendly to the environment. It basically breaks down the cellulose found in indigo dye. It makes it a lot softer and, and just better you know, feeling. And when you put it on, it's nice and soft. It's not like really scratchy and rigid. Most of the time, that's the result of an enzyme wash. Sometimes you'll see companies bragging that their denim was woven on old style shuttle looms. This is basically the way that they wove fabric up until the 1960s. This is the way that your grandfather's jeans were made. This is a really cool old school way of, of making jeans and it actually, it's, it was replaced by the projectile shuttle loom, which is our next thing. Projectile looms took over because they can make a much wider bolt of fabric, thus yielding more jeans per foot. I mean, it's just a better process as far as turning a profit. However, it doesn't necessarily make a better piece of fabric. One of the reasons for that is that this modern machinery with the projectile loom crosses the warp in rows with the weft. It does not weave it through the way selvage fabric does. So a lot of times you're not left with that rigid type of fabric. You're left with that very soft, but not as durable or dense feeling material. Up next is crocking, and all that crocking is is the transfer of indigo dye from whatever you're wearing to another source. So if you rub your hands on something, or let's say you're wearing a shirt, or you have a leather wallet that you put in your back pocket, and it comes back with a little bit of blue dye on it, which is probably gonna happen, especially with raw denim, that process is known as crocking. Leg twist is one of those things that most people don't know happens unless they've had their pair of jeans for quite a while, and that's basically where the leg will literally twist. You'll see the outseam start to come around the front, or maybe it'll go around the back, depending on which way your twill was woven. And that's just a natural 
kind of thing that happens when twill fabric is hung that way. Since it's woven on a diagonal pattern, it naturally wants to twist. Now we're not talking about a 180 degree twist. We're talking just a little bit, probably not enough that you'll ever even really notice. It's definitely much more common on wider leg jeans because there's less resistance. If you have really skinny jeans, most, you know, most likely you're not going to see them actually twist very much, but leg twist is still a thing and you're definitely going to see it if you've had your jeans for a few years. And finally, we get to raw denim. Raw denim is basically denim in its most pure form. It was dyed, it was put together, sewn into the final garment that you received, and you have to be prepared for all of the things that you have to do to take care of that denim. A lot of people find a lot of pleasure in this. I mean, the fact that it will wear beautifully, that you'll get the cool creasing, that everything that happens to it after you receive it is personal to you. That's the real appeal of raw denim. However, you will get some crocking, a little bit of indigo transfer. You have to make sure that either you got sanforized or unsanforized because they can shrink or not. All of that stuff comes with raw denim, but in the end, you are rewarded with a truly unique pair of jeans or even a jacket. I mean, anything that's made out of denim and it's really your own. It's, it's, it's something that cannot be recreated in any way. It's totally the way you wear it. So that's the real appeal of raw denim. I like this stuff a lot. I think denim is a really, really interesting segment. The problem is, is like with anything, you get people who, God forbid you use the wrong term or you pronounce something the way you thought it was pronounced and then, oh, they say, no, it's selvage. It's not selvage, it's not, calm down. That really doesn't matter. And if you're somebody who's been a little bit intimidated to get into this space because all of these different terms that are out there, all of these different things that you have to learn, don't worry about it. There are definitely resources out there for people like you to get you into the game a little bit. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool hobby. It's really interesting to get into. And if you appreciate history and things that are really, really well made, especially going from, you know, your mall brand to something that's really, really nice, you'll probably never go back. It's really, really great. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, if you want to see more, please subscribe, like, and comment. I try to respond to every single comment. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.